Amen. Wow. What a time of praise and worship, huh? You can't beat that one. Man, you all sounded like you were singing like you meant it. Amen. And I believe God had to be glorified over that one. And it's exciting to be in the house of the Lord and be together with brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, we're going to continue on with Connecting to Serve in 2021. And that's the theme uh, that, that, we, that God has laid on my heart for the year. That's the theme that, that I pray that we'll take to heart and be ready to go. Before I start, it is time for our kids to go from kindergarten, first and second graders to go ahead. Uh, Danny and Jancy are in the back waiting on you, and they'll be ready to uh, take you to Children's Church. So kids, head on back there and be ready, and you're going to have a great time with them, I promise. And we will see you at the end of the service uh, today. Connecting to serve. We've been talking about the, uh, the three connections that, that we're going to be looking at, and I've been talking to you about the key one, and that is the connection between us and God. That is the key to all things. Then we have, we'll be looking at in the next few weeks with connecting uh, to the church and connecting to the body of Christ and, and how that is uh, to be uh, part of our services to the church, to the local body. And then also to the third part, we'll be connecting to people. Because that is the way God would have the church do, is we are to be ministering to people. And so in order to minister to people, we have to be willing and able to connect to them. But today, I want to finalize the, the, this first part of connecting uh, to serve, connecting to God, by, with this message that is basically connecting to God with the heart. This is how it all starts. This is how it works, is that we connect to God with our heart. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalm 24. We're going to be looking today at verses 3 and 4 at a very important question. And the answer that's going to come along with it will conclude this part of the series as a connecting to God. And the way God wants us to connect to Him. And the only way that we're going to truly connect to God is if we connect to Him with our hearts. And so I want you to take your Bibles and look there. Psalm 24 verses 3 and 4. Let's stand in honor of reading God's Word this morning. Starting in verse 3, it says, and asks the question, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in the holy place? The answer is this, He who has, a clean, who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, and we thank you for your love, and we thank you for your grace. And God, I just pray that as we enter into this time of the service, that, Father, it would be a great extension from the wonderful praise and worship that we just experienced. And now, God, I pray that the words that I'm about to say will be your words and not mine. And I pray that this message was one you gave me and not one that I came up with on my own. And, Father, I pray that the response would be as you desire for it to be by your people. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Connecting with heart. This is what we're really aiming at here today is connecting with the heart because this is the connection that God wants. As a matter of fact, the question was, who will be able to have God's presence in their lives? And this is what this question really is. We want to be connected to God or we say we want to be connected to God. Well, who is it that's going to really truly connect and allow God's presence to be so powerful in their lives? And it's only if we connect to God with our hearts. Now, there's a lot of people that want to connect to God with their intellect. And they say, well, if I study the Word, and I know all of the great terms, and I know all the great history, I know all the great theology, that's my connection to God. Then you have those who say, well, as long as I physically am in the presence, as long as I attend, as long as I go to things, and I make my body present, then I'm connected to God. Others might even say, well, if I give, and as I give my tithes and my offerings, then that's my connection to God, and, and that's what I want. That's how I'm going to feel the presence of God. Others might even say, you know what? If I use my talents, and if I sing, or if I play an instrument, or I teach, or, or I do these wonderful things, then that's going to be my connection to God. Well, what I want us to understand is those are all good things. But listen to me, that's not how we truly connect to God because that's not what he wants. The question was, who will be the one who truly has the power and the presence of God working in their lives? And none of those things that I talked about were here. It said, he who has clean hands and a pure 
heart. So this is the way God wants you and I to connect. Now, all those other things are good, but that's not the way God wants it to. That's not the true connection. Because what I want us to understand is this. God desires and examines the heart. God desires and examines the heart. In the order to have this presence in our lives, to be connected, that God is doing this. He says, I desire your heart. This is the connection he wants. He wants those other things, but those other things don't mean anything to him as long as we don't have it do it with our heart. The heart is a very important thing here, and we're going to be looking at it here in just a few minutes. But the idea is to connect with our heart, and this is the connection he desires. Because we look in in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 6, it says, My son, give me your heart. My son... Give me your heart. And then he goes on to say, let your eyes observe my way. So what this is all about, my friends, this says, God says, I want your heart more than anything else. I want you. I want you to be a part of my life. And I want to be a part of your life. And by this, he says, then you will be able to see things. If we were to keep reading from the text that I just quoted to you in Proverbs 23, 26, and 27, and 28, if we were to go there, we would find out that it says that it talks about all the traps that are going to be laid out for this individual. And God is calling to the individual and says, my son, give me your heart. I need your heart because once I have your heart, I'm then going to show you you the way the rest of the world I'm going to show you and you're going to be able to see things the way I see them so he says when you give me your heart I'm going to be able, you're going to be able to see the people like I see the people we're going to see the lost like God sees the lost when we give him our heart we're going to see the church the way God sees the church when we give God our heart we're going to see each other the way God desires for us to see each other We will see with our heart, and that's what he says, that I will let your eyes then observe my ways. You'll know more about me. So he says, I I don't want your tithes and offerings. I don't want your sacrifices. I want your heart. Because, my friends, the world is a dangerous place, and we truly need him. But the same is also in here, even with our worship. Because what we need to see is that in Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 and 9, The Bible says here, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But listen what it says. But their hearts, their hearts are far from me. He says, so what you're doing is everything that you're saying, everything that you're doing, you're doing it out loud. But he says, their hearts are still so far away from me. And we look in this text and we see that that their hearts are far from me. And in vain, they worship me. And here's the result of it. And the Bible says here, as, as the vein of their worship being teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So what's inevitably going to happen if we connect to God in any way other than our heart, what we're going to do is we're going to begin to interpret his word the way we want to interpret it. It's going to be the way we see it. It's going to be with the way of the times. This is why, my friends, there's a lot of people today who say, we have a new revelation from God because this word is old and those concepts are old. They're tired and they don't fit anymore. So we now have a new revelation. This is the way we think it ought to be. And my friends, that is the reason why we have all of this is because people are beginning to connect to God through maybe they're trying to learn intellectually who God is. But the fact of the matter is when we turn our hearts to God, we're going to see it. And what we're going to teach and what we're going to believe about his word is the way he wants it to be. So everything becomes about how I want it to be and the way I think and the way I feel. Because again, my connection with God is not by the heart. That's why he says, give me your heart, my son. Let me work in you. Let me change you. And then the second thing is we're going to look at this, that he looks at things differently than we look at them. That's why he wants to have our hearts. Because he wants us to have eyes like he has eyes. He wants to see and think of things the way he sees and thinks of them. As a matter of fact, we, we look and, and we, we see this idea of even observing people. If you'll remember in, 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 the, in the Old Testament, David uh, was to become king. And Samuel went looking because he was told, you go and you find this this king in this place so we went and and we talked and and we saw that he brought out all this man's sons and many one after another and the first one came out and man Samuel even said boy this guy wow 
If, this is, if there's ever been a king, this is the king. Man, he's tall and he's, he's broad shoulders. He's got leadership qualities. Man, he can speak well. He can do things well. He makes great decisions. He's great, great intellectually. And the Bible says that, that, that God told Samuel, said, move him on. He's not him. Went all the way through all of the sons and couldn't find one. He said, man, is this all the sons you have? He said, no, I got one more. But, you know, he, he, we really don't waste your time because we figured the first one was going to be it. The others were just kind of here for a side dressing. But we really didn't think anything about him. He, somebody had to watch the sheep, so we wanted him to stay and watch the sheep. He's nothing but a small, ruddy-looking guy, not, you know, not much to look at. And, you know, he, he's a shepherd. He, that's why he's out there. He's not a whole lot of, not a great thinker. So we didn't figure him, and, and Samuel said, well, bring him here. Bring him here. And the very moment David walked into the room, God said, that is the king. That's the king. And so as a matter of fact, we even see in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at the appearance or the height of, or of his stature. Don't look at all those qualities that, that you in the world think are great. Don't, don't think about it the way you want it to be because you're going to pick the wrong guy. Because he's not doing it the way you think it ought to be done, the way it ought to be uh, appearing to you. Let me have your heart so that then you'll be able to see because I've refused this person. I've refused all of those that you wanted upon your own intellect, upon your own feeling, upon your own emotion. I've refused all of them. He says, for the Lord does not see as man sees. Doesn't see as man sees. He says, for man looks on the outside. The outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the what? Heart. He said, you, you would have picked this one and it had been wrong. You would have picked the next one and been wrong. You would have finally settled for the last one and you would still been wrong because that's not the one I want. I'm looking at not his physical abilities. I'm not looking at his mental abilities. I'm not looking at anything other than his heart. Because it's his heart that's going to follow me. It's heart. His heart is what I'm going to be. And we even see that this one that no one else wanted, no one else thought could be the king, we see that even in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. So this idea, my friends, that we can connect to God in so many different ways, and all that really matters is that we connect with the heart. We connect with the heart. Why? Because basically the heart... Is essentially you. That's why he wants your heart, because he wants you. We see that the conditions of our hearts determine this, because what I wrote down here says, here, the spiritual heart is where your decisions are made. When you're thinking and trying to make decisions, your heart is where it's made. When they brought the, the first son in for Samuel to see, man, his heart was, uh, his heart was not there. Man, his mind was there. But man, his heart was set for this other guy. He says, a place where you have your will, your attitude, your intentions, and is the source of your thoughts, actions, and words. That's why he says, I want your heart. Because listen to me, when we give God our heart, you know what we're giving him? We're giving him us. The way I think, the way I feel, how I perceive things, I give him everything about me. Because again, when we look in the scriptures throughout all these times, and in the King James Version, over 800 times, in other translations, it's over 700 times that he calls for the heart. I want the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart. Because he says, that's when I get you. When I get your intellect, I don't get all of you. When I get your money, I don't get all of you. When I get your talents, I may not get all of you. When I get your physical presence, oh, you can be here, but you may not even connect to God at all. But he says, man, when you give me your heart, now I've got you. Now I've got you in a good way. Because I want us to understand this. The condition of our hearts determines how we conduct our lives. Amen? Because what's in my heart determines what I do. What's in my heart determines what I think, what I feel, how I perceive things. Because it's what's in my heart. As a matter of fact, in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 34 and 35, Jesus said, brood of vipers, how can you, bring, how you, can you being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know what he said? 
Whatever's in here comes out here. You can't help it. You might change it for a little bit, but really what's in here? Out of the abundance of your heart, that's what's coming out here. Out of the abundance of your heart, that's what's coming out here. That's what we do. That's what we say. That's what we think. That's what we feel. Everything that's in our heart. So he says, how can a, an evil person think good thoughts? He says, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bring forth good things. But an evil man out of the evil treasures brings forth evil things. Because what's in your heart is what comes out of your mouth. What's in your heart is what comes out of you in your actions and your thoughts. Now listen, Jesus opened this up with brood of vipers. I'm not in here calling any of you here or any of you at home. I'm not calling you a brood of vipers, amen? Because you're my dear sweet church. Everybody said amen. Come on, let me know that you know I'm not calling you bad names. You're the beloved brethren. Amen. Jesus could get away with that. I can't get away with that. But the fact of the matter is, is whatever's in our heart, folks, is what's going to come out. And that's why Jesus said, I, I, I want your heart. I want your heart. Because the heart is that passion. The heart is, is that desire. The heart is our focus. You can do a whole lot. Listen to me. You can do a whole lot for God and not mean it. You can do a whole lot for God and not mean it. But man, when he has your heart, you will mean it every time. That, my friend, again, is where the passion comes from. That's where all the great things come from when we serve God. And so with that, if, if God desires and examines our heart, if the heart is essentially who we are, what must we do? Well, the third thing that we must do is, my friends, we must guard our hearts. We've, we've got to guard them. It's imperative that we do. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4.23, he says, guard your heart with all diligence, for of, out of it springs the issues of life. Do you know what he's basically saying? The, the, what he's saying to all of us, guard your heart, because in the heart, life of a believer, it's a priority. It should be the number one priority in your life is to protect your heart, to guard your heart. Because again, we have just understood this, is that he says, I want your heart, so we guard the heart, because the heart is essentially who we are, so we guard that, and then what we need to understand, the second reason is, is because our, our issues as believers are all, listen to me, our issues as believers are all heart issues. You say, oh, no, preacher, that's not true. Yeah, it is. That's why we guard our hearts. Because every issue I have in life, how I respond to it is a heart issue. How I deal with people, it's a heart issue. Do you understand how I even worship in here and I sing is a heart issue. So if in my heart is evil and I've not guarded it, not made it a priority, then in here is going to be evil things that can't produce good stuff anymore. My attitude will change. My thought about things will change. My perception of things will change. Because every issue you and I have is a heart issue. And that's why it says to guard your heart with all diligence. Other translations would say priority number one or above all else. Before you do anything else, the most important aspect of your life is that you guard your heart. So how do we do it? I want to wrap it up here. How do we guard our hearts? The first one is, is really quite simple and Almost a dull one is check your heart. Check your heart. Because I, 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 I can't guard my heart if my heart isn't connected to him in the right way. So there again are a lot of people who are trying to reach God with my intellect, trying to reach God with our physical, trying to reach God with our abilities, trying to reach God with our sacrifices and our tithes and our offerings, when all the time we need to stop and say, God, do you have my heart? Do you have my heart? Do I love you? 
And do I serve you well? And God, do I, do, does everything that I do in my day promote you and be an encouragement to people? Guard your heart by checking it first. Psalm 51.10 says this, Create in me a clean heart, O God. So the only person, the only being that can create in you a clean heart is God. You can't do it. Oh, you might be able to change it for a little bit, but you're going to go back to the same old stuff. The Bible says the dog would re always return to its vomit. A pig will always go back to the what? The mud. You, know, you can clean up a pig, you can shine it up, and you can polish it up, put bows all over it. But, man, you let that pig go, and you know what the pig's going to do? It's going to go back to, the, back to the mud. Why? It's a pig. So I can decorate my heart up a little bit, but until I surrender it over to Christ... I'm going to keep going back to my same old, same old. So that's why David said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Check my heart, God. And do you know what will happen anytime we ask God to truly check our hearts? He will check it. Now here's the difficult part. When he checks our heart, do you know what he will do? He will tell us you need a change of heart. That's when it comes upon us. Oh, I can say, check my heart, oh God. And he'll say, okay, I checked it. You're not going to like what I found out. Because what we want to do is start rationalizing out. Well, here's why my heart is the way my heart is. No. It's not what David said. He said, just God, would you examine my heart today? And then create in me a clean heart. Why? Because who is it? Back up to the Proverbs, uh, Psalm 24. Who is it that has God's presence in their life? He who has a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. That's why David said, God created me that clean heart. Because I want your presence. I want your power. I want your leadership. I want your tenderness. I want your love and I want your compassion. God created me that Clean heart that you want because I want so desperately to be pleasing to you and I want to be in your presence. I want to be in that place. So I want to do something very quickly. We're going to take just a moment before I continue on with the rest of this message. Just got a couple more quick points. But before we do, I want everyone, if you would, please bow your heads. And you at home, please take just a moment and bow your heads for just a second. And I want you to pray sincerely. God, how's my heart? Don't rationalize it out. God, how's my heart? And then if you would, at this point, pray, pray this verse. God, create in me a clean heart. And as a result, give me a steadfast spirit. Father, hear the prayer of every person in this room. Hear the, every per the prayer of every person that's watching this live stream. Let them feel your presence here today, God. And might you create in us clean hearts. Hear us today, Lord. Hear us. In Jesus' name, amen. So my friends, the first thing we have to do is we have to, to, to check our hearts. The second thing is, is that we, we, we seek God. We feed the soul, if you will. Seek God in our lives. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29, 13, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So here again, the heart is back into the play here. That if we will seek God, and we seek God on a daily basis, and that's why I'm, I'm talking about all this idea of, of reading the Scripture. I, 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 I talk to you almost every Sunday morning about reading the Scripture, how important it is. Because it is important. After we, after we connect to God with our heart, listen, then the intellect takes in. Then we have to know His Word. We learn what His Word says. We have to understand what His Word is meaning to us. 
That's important. And then after we do that, then it is important that we surrender our physical bodies over to him and we're physically in the places that he wants us to be. And not only then after physically, it is important then that we support through our tithes and offerings to the ministries of the church. Those are the things that we seek God in. And then it's also good that if I have a talent or a gift that God has, has given me, that I use it for his glory. All of those things are vitally important. But after we have created in us, or God has created in us, a clean heart then he'll give us that steadfast spirit but we seek him that he can be our center of our daily lives through prayer through bible study that's why paul says pray uh, pray without ceasing get in such a way that god is throughout your day speaking to you and able to deal with you seek god and the last one is very important focus on righteousness Focus on righteousness. Don't focus on stuff that doesn't matter. Man, we focus, our, our focus has been, been vied for all over the place. Man, there, there's so many things that want, uh, people like me who have ADD, we, we struggle, man, because there's so much out there going, look at this, look at this, look at this. And boy, I want to look at everything. But what we have to do is we have to focus on righteousness. The Bible tells us here, in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, finally, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate or think or focus on those things. Quit focusing on the negatives of the world. Quit focusing on the shortcomings of everybody. Because if you focus on the negative, you'll find the negative. If you focus on the shortcoming, you're going to find the shortcoming. If you focus on the, the bad and evil things, you will find bad and evil. He says, so I, what I want you to do is quit focusing on the worldly stuff and focus on that which is righteous. Because when you are connected to me, and you're focusing on the righteous, and you're guarding your heart regularly, and you're not allowing garbage to come in, and you're, you're, you're then seeing garbage is not going out. He said, that's where I want you to be. But so many of us, my friends, listen, especially in the Christian world, there's so many of us Christians who think that I can bring in garbage in my, in my mind, I can bring in garbage in my ears, I can bring garbage in my eyes, and I can do all that, and somehow all this garbage gets down into this heart that I hope I've surrendered to God, and God will then, if you will, clean it all up and then let it come out as good. Folks, can I tell you, that's a lie from Satan. Because what comes in and fills our heart, the heart doesn't, if you will, clean it up. The heart just only does this. What comes in here, settles in here, and then it comes out. The same stuff in is the same stuff out. I wish it could be different. I wish that I could tell you as Christians we can watch what we want, we can listen to what we want, and we can do all the things that we want. And boy, it's going to get in here and God will take care of it. He'll wash it up and he'll, he'll, he'll recycle it, if you will. And, and that way then the sweetness will come out of you. Bad things in, sweetness out. What do you think he just said this? If anything is righteous, if anything is good, pure, honest, of good report, if anything has good virtue, then focus your heart and your mind on that. Why? Because that coming in is what's going to be coming out. Amen? That's why he says, I want your heart. Because I want you. And then guard that heart. Man, you guard it with everything that you are. As Christians, we need to guard that heart. Man, we need to check our heart. Make sure that it is a right heart. Make sure it is that, that it's God-centered. Then we seek God through it and let that, that feed our souls. And then we focus, man, focus on righteousness. Focus on the good things. Can you imagine focusing on the good things? If everybody did that, focus on his word and the goodness of the things that he's given us, the stuff that would be coming out of us, wow. That, my friend, is what the world needs to see in us. That's what they need to hear from us. Because our own thoughts and mind 
our own ideas and stuff. And I'm going to talk about this tonight in our, in our Bible study. We're starting a new Bible study tonight. And it's the church of today. And I'm going to be looking at some of the things that are about the church and the future of the church. But one of the, I'm going to talk tonight about one of the greatest detriments to the church. One of the greatest problems that's banging on the church is, is what I'm going to call humanism. It's our own ideas. And so it can't be about me. It's got to be about him. So we're going to wrap this up by just saying our connection to God doesn't come by what we do, what we say. It comes from our heart as we surrender ourselves over to him. So today, would you surrender your heart? You here, you at home, are you willing to surrender your heart? Because what that, what that means, and it's, it's, it's easy said, easily said, but what that means is that I, because the heart is, is essence me, I am saying, God, I surrender my heart, which means I give you all of me. All of me. That's what God desires from us today. Give me your heart, O son. Who, who, can have the presence of God working powerfully in their lives. What church can do that? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God. I'd like you to bow your head. I ask the praise team to come on back up, and we're getting ready to step into this time of invitation. And during this time, my friends, I'm going to be down front, You can call if you're at home. You can call. And if God is speaking to your heart and he's calling for you to surrender your heart to him, would you do that today? And you say, well, pastor, I'm saved. Okay, you've surrendered your eternity over to him. But today, can you surrender your heart? Every piece of you saying, God, here I am. And if you need to do that today, you just pray that, and, and I'll be down front ready to, I'll pray with you if you need some, some, some help or some encouragement. You at home, call our office, and, and someone will be listening to, to visit with you. Today, take my heart, God. I want that connection with you. Father, hear our prayers during this time. And I pray, Father, for those who need to respond, that, God, they would respond if earlier in the time that they realized that their heart was never been for you, then, God, they turned their lives over to you. They received you as their Savior. God, I pray that they would uh, let me celebrate with them. And that, Lord, we could pray together. Whatever you need done in this invitation time, Lord, as I prayed earlier, that the response would be as you desire it. Father, here's the response. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand.